Welcome to the video, and today we're going to be talking about the Canon R7's image stabilization. So, let's get into it. So the first common thing is just to use the built-in in-body stabilization. There's two ways you can do this. You can just have it where the sensor's moving around, so it's like left, right, up, down, back and forth, whatever, to counteract your hands movement, or you can have it so it's that and the additional crop-in digital stabilization. Um, I will never use the additional crop-in because you can just do that in post and fine-tune it how you want. That's what I would recommend. And then the second thing you can do is have a lens that's image stabilized. So it will actually move the glass inside of it to smooth it out. Now, usually the image stabilization in the body itself and the lens is, you know, pretty good, but it's not perfect. Um, better lenses like this one have better image stabilization, so it's a lot better. Um, but it comes with some downsides, like it's bigger usually and heavier. Um, but it's also a lot more than just that. So I actually, I made a video on this lens up there. Um, there's a link up there if you want to see, check that out. Um, so, but for today's purposes, we'll just be using the standard kit lens that came with this. So there's that method. Now, the, the third method is to have like this stabilization in body plus the lens. And then to get it really smooth for handheld, you could use a gimbal. So today we're going to be doing that. This is the Ronin, the DJI, DJI Ronin RSC2, or the actually it's just the DJI RSC2. Um, so let's get this configured. Um, this is currently set up for the Blackmagic Pocket 6K with a Sigma 18 to 35. It actually does fit on here, um, just barely. So I think the newer gimbals, the RS3 and RS3 Pro have are have bigger arms and stuff to fit cameras better, but this does actually fit that, so that's cool. First off, let's get our mounting plate set up. So um, what we wanna do is get the mount plate, mounting plate on here, put it on here, and then balance the whole gimbal to make this work. So let's open up the little bag. I have two plates here. The shorter one works best with the Blackmagic camera. So I'm gonna set that to the side because we can use the bigger one so I don't have to use that. My goal for this is actually, these are all Arca Swiss plates. So what I can do is have this one on the Blackmagic, this one on the Canon R7, and then they slide into here, which is nice. Now, because they're Arca Swiss plates, they can also slide onto other Arca Swiss plate accessories. So here we have that same plate that came with the gimbal and I can should be able to, yep, pop it right onto the Peak Design Travel Tripod. So I can shoot on this, pull the camera off, shoot on this, and I don't have to rebalance anything or you know, switch base plates, which can get to be annoying if you're doing this a lot. Super nice and this is nice and small and compact and so is this. So we have our base plate. We need a screw, a screw somewhere in here. Here it is. And here's the screwdriver. Get rid of all this, except for, let's see if we can get the lens support to work, which would be nice. And we're done with this for now, unless we need something else. So let's flip the camera upside down. See here we've got our threading. So let's throw that on there. We'll try it in the middle. If it doesn't work, we can move it to one side or the other. So let's throw that on right here to this. Just make sure it's even. I wish this camera had two threads. Um, you can get a cage for it to fix that because sometimes um, it's probably not going to be an issue with this camera, but with the Blackmagic, it can swivel back and forth. So actually I've got a cage coming today, so I'll make a video on that and see if it fits on here as well. Um, you can get like a uh, small rig or a tilt -a camera cage and it gives you mounting points everywhere, it's pretty cool. So let's throw that on here. Now before we do this, we need to make sure all of our cards and everything is in here. So yep, our battery's in here. And do we do have our cards? Yep, we do. So that'll affect the balancing. Um, probably not the card so much, but the battery would. And then we've got a lens. So let's throw the lens on. I tried 
to get this to work with this, but it's far too heavy, so that will not work. And then let's pop this off. Now, the downside with this setup is the lens is not fixed, so it will extend depending on your focal range, but that's, I mean, it will affect it, but probably not too much for it to really be a problem. I'll set it at what I usually like to shoot at, which is 35 millimeters. I'll balance it that way. Um, and that way I can, you know, shoot at what I normally do and I can extend it if I want. I'll probably never go to 150 on the gimbal, probably just 35, 50 and 24, but it's, it's there if you want to do that. So um, let's, the last thing we need is the cable. I forgot to grab this in advance, so I'll be right back with the cable. Okay, so we've got some cable options. These are all that came with the gimbal itself. Um, so we're just looking for USB-C to USB-C. The nice thing is it comes with all the cable ends, so we can have, um, what is this? Sony Multi um, plug, and then we got micro USB, and then we have, what's this one? Wait, two micro USBs. Oh, a mini USB and a micro USB, okay. And then this one, which is what we're going to be using today, a dual USB-C. So we can plug this into the first port here and then into the side of this guy. And what this should give us, hopefully, is focus control of the camera and ISO control and all that kind of thing. So we can actually just control it from the gimbal or from the mobile app, the DJI Ronin app. So. Now that that's all hooked up and how we want it, let's balance this thing. Oh, actually, before we do that, I just forgot. Throw our lens support on. If it works, this might not work at all. It's too short. You can't use the DJI lens support. It's too short, it won't reach with, with the bigger plate. I'm sure it would with a, with a low profile one, but it's probably secure enough anyway. And even if it did did reach, it would be in, right here and that wouldn't work for when you extended it. It could cause some problems. So I guess we won't be using this. Something to note if you were planning on using the lens support. It kind of works, but you can't change your focal range. Okay, so let's set this back to 35 and let's balance it. So first, um, when balancing the gimbal, that is not balanced. It should just stay there. It is not. So we can slide this forward. And, and actually, this is how you can see the Black Magic. This is set up to be balanced for that. And see how back heavy that is. So that's like how heavy the lens is that I usually use the Sigma 18 to 35. It's a lot heavier. So you can actually, it would be this one. We can slide this forward. Wow, that's four to ways. There we go. So see how that's not moving anymore? If I tilt it up, now it is. So when I tilt it up, it should be um, flat and shouldn't move. So that would be this axis right here. So I can unscrew that, move it back. Oh, now it's tilting back, tilting back. Now it's solid. Now I should be able to just put it here, put it here, put it here, and it's stable. Next, we can lock this axis and unlock this one. Oh, see how it's fallen down? So that means we can slide this back, ways like that. It's pretty close. Oh, see we're coming up. Oh, now we're not. Okay, so now this is stable. When you move it around, it doesn't move. It's not supposed to move. That should be good. Okay. We hold. Yep. We're holding. There we go. Got it. Takes a little bit sometimes, especially when you haven't done it before and you don't know the general area it's supposed to be in. And then let's lock this. So if we just lock the bottom, we should just be able to put this anywhere we want. And the reason we're doing this is because if you just have it so where like when it's turned off and it's just like always down and like is not balanced at all. It's a lot harder for the motors to, to balance it than if we just have it balanced. So then they just have to do the smallest amount of movement to move it around and not lift up the whole camera. 
So now that's this one, we tilt the gimbal over here. See, it's um, that way, it's heavy, so it's back heavy. So we can slide it forward a little bit, probably a lot actually, because it's oh, far too much, maybe not so much. So now I tilt it, it is staying in spot. That one's the easiest one to get, I think. Let's put our lens caps over here. Oops. And you want to make sure that your lens cap is pulled off because that affects the balance as well. Okay, so now let's unlock all of them. Oh, are we not balanced right? I don't think we're balanced right. Slide this back just a tiny bit. There we go. Okay. There we go. I must have not locked it all the way or something. So now we're all locked down on all the mounts and things and we're balanced. Okay, let's turn the gimbal on by holding the power button. It's on now. And it's probably going to jitter a bunch. Jitter? No. Oh. But we need to calibrate. So hold down the M button and the trigger until it says calibrating. There it goes. Now it will move the camera back and forth and figure out what it should be at. And we're done. So now, look at that. Nice and smooth. And then um, we can also add the image stabilization of the body itself. I'm gonna switch this back to my favorite mode, which is mode one here. No, oh, not that one, mode one. Right there, which is pan follow. So it pans follow, but it doesn't um, do it when you go up and down, which is nice for like, if you're following someone behind them or in front of them, it'll just keep level. But if you turn, it'll also turn. And then you can also just press the trigger to lock it in place so it can move all around nicely. And then you can use a joystick to actually move it around or the app or whatever you want. So that's really, really nice. Um, it's very light compared to the Black Magic. So I could, I could probably use this for a lot longer without getting tired. The Black Magic setup is around eight pound, pounds fully kitted out, which is a little bit heavy. This is probably a lot less fully kitted out like this. And the battery life, this should last like four hours or so. Um, for the camera instead of like the 20 minutes I get on the Black Magic, And I tried to add the big core battery I have underneath it to this, but it did not work. I mean, it kind of did, but I had to like mount it like up here with some different brackets and things and it, would, it doesn't work. So um, I think there is a way to mount it underneath, but I don't have that bracket. So I didn't do that. So as far as this goes, let me, yeah, I, I think we're good. It works well. Got my SD cards in there, so um, let's come back tonight after I film a bunch of stuff and see how the footage looks. So yeah, let's go film. Okay, we're back from filming, so let's get this SD card out and start reviewing the footage. So pop the camera out. And here we go. Now I didn't record um, probably about half the clips. I forgot to turn on autofocus. So um, some of these examples might be a little bit blurry. So let's look at this footage here. Um, these are some photos I took earlier and then here's the clips. So here's it stabilized right here. Now it's a little bit out of focus because I forgot to turn on the stabilization but it looks pretty smooth to me. Um, let's look at the next clip here. A little out of focus again, but I think that's, you know, fine for a test. I wish it was in focus, but I went out again and got some more shots that were in focus. So, uh, how about this one? Yeah, out of focus again, but there we go. And once you, when, once it's in focus and it starts moving, it's, it's really good on the gimbal.
yeah nice and smooth um, let's go down to some of them where I actually turned on autofocus Wow yeah um, pretty good now I will say it's a lot easier to use this than the black magic because autofocus is nice and it's so much lighter it's so much lighter and that's super nice um, the black magic is quite heavy so um, I did do a somewhere here a comparison shot um, where I ran with both cameras um, with stabilized not so yeah so this is not stabilized I don't think here yeah so this is this is running with it down the street with just the body itself so it's pretty everywhere and I'm doing the best I can to just hold it and run as fast as I can so not usable and then let's throw it on the gimbal here um, where is the shot here's the shot this is with the gimbal I mean I'm I'm running so I mean that's a lot more usable it would still use could use a little bit of post stabilization if I were to actually use this it's pretty good. There is like a super smooth option, but I have to buy like the lens strap for it to work. But I mean, for running as fast as I can with the gimbal, um, pretty smooth, I would say. Yeah, most of the most of the movements that you're seeing is just up and down, which this can't counteract as easily. Um, so if I add like a fourth thing that that moved it up and down it would be really smooth that's where i guess the the ronin 4d could come come in handy because it can do that but it's not a gimbal it's just a whole camera setup thing so as far as footage goes where it's just like panning shots and stuff like that and you're not running with it walking shots is, it's fine um definitely far better than the camera's built-in stabilization that's for sure so I think, yeah, um, I think there's a shot somewhere in here where I put it close to the ground here. So this is on the gimbal. And then I had it underslung. So I was holding it like this. Yeah, pretty good. I was holding it like this here and I was running with it down our yard. Pretty good. Now these are pretty extreme examples. I wouldn't normally be running around with a camera like this. Um, but as far as like practically using it, I would say the image, stabil the image stabilization in the body and the lens is great and um, totally works for most work, for handheld work. If you're just doing like, like just walking around with it, um, holding it, if you are just trying to get like a little bit of b-roll for something and you just want to just do something like that it it totally works for that but the gimbal is definitely better but is you know it's going to be more of a hassle to use you have to bring it and then set it up make sure it's charged all that but and buy it if you don't have one which yeah but for me i think the gimbal is a great option to have um just i would wouldn't use it every time um but it is there between the gimbal and then the tripod. Um, I would probably use the tripod more often than the gimbal, um, but for B-roll stuff or um, just walking around having having that is super nice to have and far better. So um, I will be making a video on this at some point. This is the Peak Design Travel Tripod. And I do love that both of these are the Arca Swiss plates. So as you saw from earlier, Video. I just pulled it off here and I can slap it on here tighten it down and yeah it's securely on so that's nice I wish the only thing I wish is um, the tripod I'm using right now is the Manfrotto um, tripod with the Manfrotto um, base plate which I guess this technically is but it doesn't work super well on it so um, I will have to change out plates if I want to use that camera. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoy the video, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell to see when the next video comes out. Also, if you want to see the videos over here, I have one on the Sigma 70-200. to 
F2.8 right there and the Canon R7 unboxing.